So listen, it's 2023 and there has never been a better time to be an introvert. So it's time for you to stop messing around and get your life together. Because in this video, I'm gonna be going over the nine best jobs for introverts and I'm gonna be breaking them down into three different job types. And this is gonna help you find the best job for your personality type. And those three are going to be creative, business, and technology related careers. And you have to understand that picking the wrong career, especially as an introvert, will absolutely obliterate your chances of having a happy life and getting a good job that gives you fulfillment and makes you happy. And it's not only important to choose the right career, but it's also important to choose the right job within that career. And this holds very true with the first category we're gonna be talking about, which is creative careers. So they did a survey of the most desirable jobs in the United States for young people, and YouTuber came out to be number one by a wide margin. But there's one massive problem with being a YouTuber. You see, normal businesses are structured kind of like a pyramid where the CEO is is on top, then you have the executives, then you have management, and then you have the employees. So if you take the CEO out of the top part, the business is still relatively stable. YouTube businesses are the exact opposite where you invert that pyramid. The CEO is at the bottom, then you have executives, then you have management, and then you have employees. If you take the CEO out, the pyramid is unstable and it's not able to keep standing, right? So you can't have Linus Tech Tips without Linus. You can't have Mr. Beast without Mr. Beast. And so it's extremely difficult for people who own these massive YouTube brands that are sometimes evaluated at billions of dollars and have hundreds of employees to outsource some of their creative work. And one of those positions that's incredibly difficult to outsource is script writing. So what a lot of people don't realize when they're watching YouTube videos is 95% of the things that happen, for instance, in a Mr. Beast video are planned. They're scripted. Of course, there's always that 5% of things that happen out of the blue that they end up keeping in the final cut. But in order to make sure that they have a really good video, they have to have control over what happens, aka scripting and planning. And script writing is a position that is incredibly difficult to fill. I know hundreds of different content creators and almost all of us have to train script writers, right? There's no infrastructure to just go out there and hire a good script writer. We have to just kind of hire smart people and then spend a ton of time and effort training them. And so if you're able to help a YouTuber write scripts, that is incredibly valuable. And listen, the creator economy is at its infancy right now. There are creators out there that are getting more views than entire news networks, and yet they're only making a few hundred thousand dollars a year. And that's because they don't understand how to monetize yet. Whereas these news networks that are getting the same amount of views are making hundreds of millions. And in the next five to 10 years, these creators are going to be figuring out how to monetize. And I think they're going to be making even even more money than the news networks. And that means they are going to be hiring a ton of people. There's gonna to have to be an infrastructure for this creator economy. And I always tell you on this channel to go where the opportunity is, and there is a massive amount of opportunity in the creator economy. And getting a job is great. I mean, think about it. You're essentially getting paid to learn valuable skills. But later on down the line, if you want to become a YouTuber yourself, this might be the best way to get into it. And if you don't go where the opportunity is, you're probably gonna end up like 95 5% of people hating their job. And on top of that, you're probably not gonna be able to get a girlfriend. So make sure that you follow this rule. And it's well known in the creative world that introverts tend to make better writers. In fact, most people I know who hire writers typically end up letting them work whenever they want. And the reason for that is because a lot of writers will do their best work at different times of the day. Sometimes it'll be in the morning, sometimes it might be in the afternoon after a nice walk, or sometimes it might be at night. And at the end of the day, all they care is that the writer puts out good work. And so you have a ton of free freedom and autonomy as a writer, and you're typically only going to have to talk to maybe one or two other people that you're familiar with. And contrary to popular belief, introversion isn't about being a loner or a weirdo. It's more about energy. You get energized by being alone or by being with people who you're very familiar with, and you lose energy when you have to interact with new people or large groups. And I happen to know that good or even decent level script writers out there are making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. And as an introvert myself, I still write my scripts. For instance, I wrote the script to this video, and I actually really enjoy doing it. And before we move on to the next one, which might even be better than scriptwriter, one thing I wanna say about careers is I have probably helped more introverts and more people get into careers that they love than 99.9% .9 of politicians. And most of my audience is introverted like me, so I know a lot when it comes to helping introverts get into their ideal careers. And this next one on the list is gonna be for people who love cinematography, videography, 
watching YouTube videos or editing. Now, most of the time when people talk about video editing online, what they're gonna tell you is you should get really skilled at video editing so you can take wedding videos. But the truth is I have hired people who take wedding videos and they don't necessarily make good YouTube editors. So sometimes you'll hear really smart people say that you need to learn YouTube editing specifically because it's completely different skill set than editing wedding videos. And what you should learn is called YouTube retention editing. So this is sort of unfortunate, but with the rise of TikTok, people's attention spans have been going down. And now in order to capture people's attention on YouTube, you have to do what's known as retention editing. And this is basically where you maximize the retention of the YouTube video in order to send signals to the YouTube algorithm that it's a good video and it'll pump it out to a wider audience. Now, this isn't something that you're going to notice unless you actually look for it because the best editing is actually editing that you don't notice. So it's designed to appeal to your subconscious mind. Now, if you watch all the top YouTubers and it doesn't matter which niche you go to, whether it's tech, business, finance, et cetera, you're gonna notice that the top ones all use retention editing. And basically it's a way of making their videos as engaging and watchable as possible. And so if you're somebody who is an absolute YouTube nerd, you watch YouTube all the time, this is something that might appeal to you. And I'm gonna give an absolute pro tip on how to become a great retention editor. So. First of all, you want to specialize in a specific YouTube niche. So for instance, you could start making videos for personal finance channels like mine. And then you want to look at the top personal finance channels on YouTube, put some of their top videos on a phone, and then put your video on another phone and put them right next to each other, right in front of you. And then what you wanna do is you want to watch the video with no sound, right? So watch their video and then watch your video with no sound. And then you wanna take note of how many edits there are in the first 30 seconds. And you also want to take note of what types of edits. And you're probably going to notice that if you're not thinking about retention editing, a normal video might have like eight to 10 cuts in the first 30 seconds. Whereas somebody who's doing retention editing and doing it well, probably has somewhere between 30 to 60 cuts within the same amount of time. And this is like the best pro tip I have ever heard when it comes to getting really good at editing. I think I might have heard this from Mr. Beast. But yeah, I currently pay a bunch of editors. They make really good money. And this is one where I know the top editors are making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and the top YouTubers are basically fighting over their time. Now the next one on the list might be even more valuable than the first two that I talked about. And this is one where I've seen people actually break into the seven figure mark per year. And the way they're able to do this is by becoming a content strategist. So there's this great YouTube channel that I followed for a while called Patty Galloway. And he basically broke down how the top YouTubers are first of all creating successful YouTube videos and then second of all monetizing their content. And Patty Galloway started by making content on YouTube and he was able to leverage that into becoming the content strategist for Mr. Beast. So a content strategist for a YouTuber is almost like being a general for a king. You're gonna help them come up with the content strategy to beat the algorithm. And there's gonna be a ton of research, organization, analysis, and planning skills that go into that. So if you're the type of person who likes to kind of plan things behind the scene, like you like being the person who's behind the curtains pulling the strings, but you don't wanna be the face of the organization, this can be a phenomenal career for you. Now, not everybody wants to get into creative careers, so the next set of careers I'm gonna talk about are going to be business related. Now, most people think that you have to be an alpha male, bad boy, extrovert in order to be successful in business. But the truth is the most successful people in business are introverted, nerdy types. I mean, think about the richest people in the world. Do they look like extroverts? Do they look like alpha males to you? So don't be afraid to learn business if you're introverted and nerdy because it's probably an advantage. So this first career has to do with ads and every single year, trillions of dollars are spent on advertising. And if a company does a good job advertising, if they spend $1, they might get $10 back. But if they do a bad job advertising when they spend $1, they might actually lose money. And that's where you come in as a pay-per-click specialist. You're gonna be managing and optimizing paid advertising campaigns for business on websites like Google or YouTube. And if you get good at this, this is an incredibly valuable skill set. I mean, think about it. A bad pay-per-click specialist might spend $1 and get like a dollar and 10 cents back, whereas a good pay per click specialist might spend a dollar and get $10 back. Of course, companies are going to pay people who are good at this sort of thing because it's going to directly make them more money. 
Now, speaking of marketing, I don't have a massive marketing team like all the big universities do that are trying to get you to spend $100,000 on a college degree. And so I get a lot of my viewers from word of mouth. People share my videos with their friends and their family whenever they see somebody who's struggling with careers. So if you know somebody who needs to watch some great content about careers and education or just personal finance in general, send them this video. So this is one where even at the entry level, you're able to make like 40, 50K per year. In fact, I actually did an interview with James, who is a 16 year old who was able to get a job in digital marketing, and he was able to make $40,000 a year right off the bat. And James was trained by my friend Seth, who has literally trained thousands of people to become digital marketers. And he has a free training that will basically go over the different types of digital marketing and whether it's a good option for you, depending on your personality. And I'll put that down in the description as well as the pinned comment below. Now, the next one on the list is going to involve Google. And every single day, there is 8.5 billion searches on the platform and all the different websites compete with each other to be at the top of the search results when people search those terms and the process of getting the articles on your website to be at the top of the search rankings is called search engine optimization or seo and this is where you come in as an seo specialist now this is especially good for analytical types that like deciphering google's algorithm and figuring out what makes articles rank at the top and what makes them rank at the bottom and seo is not only about figuring out what the best terms are and the best way to title your article, but it's also about making the most valuable content that you possibly can so that people stay on your article for a longer amount of time. And they also have a good experience while they're reading it. And this is another one where SEO specialists tend to work independently. You don't have to talk with that many people and the people that you do talk to, you're going to be familiar with. Now, the third one on this list might come as a massive surprise because it has to do with sales. And as an introvert, you probably think that sales is one of the worst possible jobs that you could do. But actually, some of the best salespeople I know are introverts. And my favorite job ever as an introvert myself was a sales job. And sales is one of the most valuable skills you could possibly learn. And it's the number one job that billionaires and millionaires have done in their past. And this particular role is not only good for sales, but it's also good for what's known as prospecting. And that is going to be a business development development representative. And this is basically where you're going to be establishing new relationships with companies and maintaining old relationships. And so for instance, you might work for a software company that solves problems for other companies. And basically your job is to have a long-term relationship with these other companies. So it's not like a sketchy used car salesman type of role. And so some business development representatives are just going to do the prospecting part. And that does not involve very much human interaction. But a lot of BDRs will actually move on to talking to their clients as well. But again, you're not going to be meeting too many new people and you're probably going to be talking with the same people most of the time. And on top of that, selling over the phone isn't nearly as intense as selling one on one in person. Now, unfortunately, contrary to what the news might say, you can't just identify as a top level salesman because objective reality kind of gets in your way. This is something you're going to have to work at. But if it sounds like too much for you, I think you're really going to enjoy the next three on the list that have to do with technology. So technology is probably the number one industry you could possibly work in. There's more opportunity in the tech industry than any other industry out there. And pretty much every successful business now is using a ton of technology, both hardware with computers, phones, iPads, etc., and also software. And in order to maintain that technology infrastructure, you're going to need people in the IT department. And that's where IT help desk comes along. And in my opinion, this is probably the easiest position that you can land to get your foot in the door in the technology industry. So this position, as an introvert will allow you to work independently and it will also allow you to solve technical issues. And yes, you will be having to answer phones and talk to people, but a lot of the time it's going to be people in your company that you already know. And again, talking to people over the phone isn't nearly as bad for introverts as talking to people one-on-one -on -one in person. Plus, there's a ton of great jobs that you can move into in the future. Now, this is another one where you're probably gonna start off around 40 to 60K per year, but you can move up into much higher paying jobs than that in a short period of time. Now, one of the reasons why the technology industry has so much opportunity is the fact that technology companies figured out how to collect a bunch of data. And to be honest with you, they did it in a very sketchy way and they pretty much got away with it. But that's not the topic of this video. But one thing that's very important is the ability to organize, analyze, and provide insights for that data. And being able to do this is incredibly 
valuable because you've probably seen the articles, data is more valuable than oil or gold. And so that's where data analysts come in. They work behind the scenes using statistical analysis in order to analyze data and then provide valuable insights that will lead to actionable results. Now this one does require some mathematics abilities, so that might scare off a lot of people out there, but it's usually going to be the statistics side of mathematics. And you can make a ton of money as a data analyst and there's a lot of jobs down the line. So for instance, entry-level data analysts make about $70,000 per year. But like I said, that's just an entry-level job. There are jobs down the line where you can make it up to like 200, 250,000 plus dollars per year. Now this next one on the list is the single career that has probably cause the most people to be able to retire at an early age, sometimes 40s or even 30s. This is the number one career that you see in the financial independence retire early movement, and that is going to be software developers. And basically everything that you see on the internet was created by a software developer. So for instance, this YouTube channel, you're watching this on YouTube, I would assume that was created by software developers. The algorithm that suggested this video to you was created by software developers. The phone or the TV or the computer that you're watching this on was partially created by software developers. And software development is basically the ability to speak the language of robots and command them to do whatever you want. And they make a ton of money. Even the entry level software developer job makes about $95,000 a year. And if you look at websites like levels.fyi, you're going to see plenty of people who make 200,000, even $300,000 a year when you consider not just the salary, but also the bonuses and stock options. Now, this is one where I'll say it's a little bit more difficult to get into than a lot of the other ones on this list. Almost every single other one that I mentioned here, you could probably get into within like three months, maybe six months max. But for software developer, it's probably going to take you a little bit longer than that. But yeah, this is another career that is absolutely absolutely dominated by introverts. And introverts do tend to love remote or semi-remote jobs. And I actually created a tier list where I ranked the best and the worst remote jobs from S tier, which is the best, to F tier, which is the worst. And you can check that out by clicking right here.